Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix. Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix, 24 October 1949, 18 October 2013, was a Mexican drug lord and former leader of the Tijuana Cartel, a drug trafficking organization. He was the oldest of seven brothers and headed the criminal organization early in the 1990s alongside them. Through his brother Benjamin, Francisco Rafael joined the Tijuana Cartel in 1989, following the arrest of Miguel Angel Felix, Gallardo, one of the most prominent drug czars in Mexico during the 1980s. When the Arellano Felix took control of the organization in the early 1990s, tensions with the rival Sinaloa cartel prompted violent attacks and slayings from both fronts. The drug lord was arrested in 1993 in Tijuana, Baja California, and imprisoned at Federal Social Redaptation Center No. 1, a maximum security prison. In 2006, he was extradited to the United States, pending charges on drug trafficking in a California federal district court. He was released from prison two years later and deported back to Mexico. Back in his home country, Francisco Rafael had no other pending criminal charges. While celebrating his birthday in Los Cabos, Baja California Sur on 18 October 2013, a gunman disguised as a clown shot him dead. Early Life Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix was born in Culiacan, Sinaloa, on 24 October 1949, to Benjamin Francisco Arellano Sanchez's father and Norma Alicia Felix Zezueta mother. His father was from the state of Durango but emigrated to Sinaloa, where he met his wife in the 1940s. The couple had 11 children. Francisco Rafael being the eldest of his seven brothers Benjamin, Carlos Alberto, Eduardo, Ramon Eduardo, Luis Fernando, Francisco Javier, and four sisters Alicia, Maria, Enidina, Norma Isabel, and Leticia. He also had two half-brothers, Jesus and Manuel Arellano, but their second surnames remain confidential. Francisco Rafael grew up in a modest house in Miel Hidalgo St. Hash 566 in Culiacan, blocks away from the Autonomous University of Sinaloa, and lived there for about 20 years. Neighbors recall that the Arellano Felix brothers were cheerful boys without addictions and inclined to selling cloves, liquor, and candy that they brought illegally from the United States. Francisco Rafael went to Alvaro Obregan Elementary School a couple of streets away from their house. He later attended Emilio Obiso Middle School in the same neighborhood. At a young age, Francisco Rafael dropped out of middle school to help out his father, a mechanic. Alongside his brothers Benjamin and Ramon, however, he also smuggled contraband from Tijuana. His affinity towards music led him and his two brothers to form a musical group known as Sonido Escorpion and later renamed as Los Escorpions. By the 1970s, his family moved to Guadalajara, Jalisco, but Francisco Rafael stayed in Culiacan, where he owned an event center known as El Chaplin. He then moved years later to Mazatlan and created the discotheque Frankie O. Francisco Rafael's discotheque was a major nightlife attraction in Mazatlan during the mid 1980s With an estimated U.S. $5 million investment to build it, Frankie O. had the capacity to host 2,500 people. It had an internal waterfall and a large dance floor surrounded by a fish tank. The nightclub's theme also mirrored a zoo because it had several exotic animals, including two lions in the entrances and in the surroundings. The only non-living animal inside Frankie O was a scorpion which was found as a giant metal statue at a water fountain and as the logo of the nightclub. Francisco Rafael usually carried a diamond encrusted scorpion necklace in reference to his astrological sign, the Scorpio. His discotheque invited several famous Mexican and international artists, including but not limited to Luis Miel, Emmanuel Majeres, Nelson Ned, Ricardo Montaner, among others. It also hosted car and motorcycle shows where Francisco Rafael performed with his Harley Davidson. 
With his popularity rising in Mazatlan, he was named Businessman of the Year by a local radio station. Aside from managing the Frankio, Francisco Rafael organized beauty contests, sports tournaments, and made frequent appearances in social magazines. He was a close friend of former world champion Mexican boxer Julio Cesar Chavez, whom he considered as close as a brother of his. Francisco Rafael lived most of his early life as a businessman and playboy while his brothers Benjamin and Ramon became involved in the drug trade after moving to Tijuana in the 1980s. Francisco Rafael was first married to Victoria Barrianuvo and had three children, Francisco, Benjamin Arellano Barrianuvo, and an unnamed daughter. After separating, he married Rocio del Carmen Lizarraga Lizarraga, whom he kidnapped a few months after she was declared queen of a carnival in Mazatlan, and just after her 18th birthday in Crimes, crimes. The sister of Francisco Rafael's mother, Agustina Felix Zezueta, married Jesus Labre, a vile's alias El Chai, a drug trafficker under the tutelage of Miel Angel Felix Gallardo, the former leader of the Guadalajara cartel and a high-profile drug lord in Mexico. Other sources say that the Arellano Felix brothers were nephews of the drug Lord Felix Gallardo, who allegedly introduced them to the drug trade in Baja, California. Benjamin worked with the drug trafficker Javier Caro, and cousin of Rafael Caro Quintero, who later fled to Canada after Felix Gallardo was arrested in 1989 and after he feared a coup from the Arellano Felix. With the leadership void open, Benjamin started to work full-time with his uncle Labra Eviles, Francisco Rafael, Ramon, and Javier later joined them in Tijuana. The arrest of Felix Gallardo led to the disintegration of the Guadalajara cartel into several drug trafficking organizations. In the western coast, a faction formed the Sinaloa cartel. In the Ciudad Juarez border area, another group formed the Juarez cartel, and in the Baja California border region, Others formed the so-called Tijuana Cartel. In December 1989, the Arellano Felix ordered their gunmen. Once established in Tijuana, the Arellano Felix forged important relations with some of the most prominent families in the region. The flight eventual arrest and murder of Caro Payne angered his associates that headed the Sinaloa and Sonora cartels. Two leaders of the Sinaloa Cartel, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, now jailed in the United States, and his business partner Hector El Guro Palma, attempted to take control of Tijuana from the hands of the Arellano Felix in the early 1990s. The antagonism lasted for several years and was accompanied by violent acts in the states of Baja California, Sonora, Sinaloa, Durango, Jalisco, Guerrero, Michoacan, and Oaxaca. In 1989, El Chapo Guzman sent Armando Lopez alias El Rayo, one of his most trusted men, to speak with the Arellano Felix in Tijuana. Before he had a chance to speak face to face with them, Lopez was killed by Ramon. The corpse was disposed in the outskirts of the city, and the Tijuana cartel ordered a hit on the remaining family members of the Lopez family to prevent future reprisals. Two years later, Ramon killed another Sinaloa cartel associate, Rigoberto Campos Salcido alias El Rigo, prompting bigger conflicts with the rival cartel. In September 1992, the Tijuana cartel ordered another hit against their rivals in Iguala, Guerrero. Lawyers of Felix Gallardo and several of his family members were kidnapped and killed by gunmen. El Garo, Palmer responded to the attacks by ordering several of his men to kill eight members of the Arellano Felix organization at the Christine Discotheque in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco. Ramon and Francisco Javier were the prime targets, but they escaped uninjured. Their deep-seated rivalry reached its peak on 24 May 1993, when gunmen affiliated with the Tijuana cartel attempted to kill El Chapo Guzman in the Guadalajara International Airport. In the raging fire, gunmen shot a luxurious vehicle thought to hold Guzman, however, among those aboard was Catholic Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Acampo, 
who was killed at the scene, along with six other civilians. Guzman successfully escaped the assassination attempt by leaving in a taxi. On 4 December 1993, Francisco Rafael was arrested by the Federal Judicial Police PJF in Tijuana for charges on drug trafficking, illegal use of weaponry under Mexican law, and complicity in the murder of Posadas Acampo. He was sentenced to 10 years and 3 months and imprisoned at the Federal Social Redaptation Center No. 1, a maximum security prison in Almoloya de Juarez, state of Mexico. Unlike the rest of his brothers who eventually led the Tijuana cartel and made it one of the leading and most violent drug trafficking organizations in Mexico during the 1990s, Francisco Rafael was not a key player in the cartel's hegemony. His arrest in 1993 was earlier than the eventual downfall of his other brothers, who were later arrested and slashed or killed. In the Tijuana cartel, his task was to coordinate the buying and selling of narcotics to the United States. Extradition to the U.S. Release and deportation. Though sentenced to six years in prison, Francisco Rafael was released on 4 March 2008 after a year and five months behind bars. His lawyer confirmed that he was released for the time he had previously served in Mexico. Once released, he was deported to Mexico through the Paso del Norte International Bridge, Santa Fe International Bridge in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, and El Paso, Texas. He had no pending charges in his home country. Mexican authorities watched Francisco Rafael from a distance as he merged through the multitude of people close to the border. It was unknown if his family was notified of his deportation, but the authorities alleged that shortly after his arrival he took a flight to Tijuana to see his wife and children. Upon his arrival, Francisco Rafael moved to Mazatlan before deciding to move to Los Cabos, a resort town in the Baja California Peninsula. The former drug lord lived there with his wife in Cumbers del Tezel, an upper-middle-class neighborhood on a hill and with view towards the Arco de Cabo San Lucas. Instead of his actual name, Francisco Rafael went by his pseudonym Mauro Vasquez and posed as a businessman, avid motorcyclist, and music producer. Death Francisco Rafael was celebrating his 64th birthday along with his wife, children, and friends at Ocean House, a beachfront banquet hall owned by Hotel Marbella in Los Cabos, Baja California Sur on 18 October 2013. There were about 80 to 100 attendees at the party including prominent businessmen, politicians, celebrities, and sport figures such as former Mexican footballer Jared Borghetti and professional boxer Omar Chavez. The party also hosted a number of musical groups including Banda La Cabina, El Mariachi de Los Cabos, and the former leading vocalist of Banda El Ricodo. At around 8, 0 p.m. that day, a black-colored SUV entered the private property and parked near the entrance of the ballroom. In the front seats of the car, according to eyewitness reports, were two men in the back seat, was a man dressed as a clown, who descended from the vehicle and headed towards the door that led to the kitchen. Once inside the ballroom, the clown identified Francisco Rafael at the center of the room and began to walk towards him. When the clown was about 1 in 3.3 ft close, he pulled out a pistol from his costume and shot him point-blank in his head and then several times more as he fell to the ground, killing him on the scene. As the former drug lord lay dead near the entrance, the assassin ran through a rear exit while the attendees yelled, fell to the ground, and hid under the tables. Four more shots were heard outside the ballroom shortly after the attack. According to eyewitnesses, the clown had done this to scare off one of Francisco Rafael's sons, who was chasing him. The suspect then fled the crime scene in the black-colored SUV and headed towards the highway. The first to arrive at the crime scene were the municipal authorities of Los Cabos, followed by the Mexican Armed Forces, and the federal and state police forces. Upon the arrival of the authorities, Francisco Rafael's wife, in between tears, informed them of the former drug lord's identity. The autopsy revealed 
that Francisco Rafael died of severe traumatic brain injury from shots in the thorax and head with an FN57 pistol. The murder of Francisco Rafael initially fell under state jurisdiction because he was not wanted by the federal government when he was killed. Therefore, the murder investigation was started by the Baja California Sir Authorities and not by the Office of the General Prosecutor PGR. However, the PGR joined the case after it was requested by the state authorities. Funeral, well, funeral, funeral. On 19 October 2013, the Baja California Sur State Police escorted the corpse of Francisco Rafael and his family members to the port of Pitch Island. The body was then shipped by boat to his home state of Sinaloa. It was initially reported by the media that his corpse was to be cremated in Mazatlan, however, his remains were taken to the city of Las Machais in the municipality of a home for cremation on 20 October 2013. Aftermath and Investigation Roughly 24 hours after the death of Francisco Rafael, the Mexican Federal Police arrested Manuel Aguirre Galindo alias El Cavalo the Horse, a founder of the Tijuana Cartel and a high-ranking leader and money launderer who had been a fugitive for more than 20 years in Mexico City. It is unknown who notified the authorities of his whereabouts, but they alleged that they were either notified by a rival gang or by members of the Arellano Felix clan. Among the hypotheses presented by Zeta, a Tijuana-based magazine known for its investigative reports on the Tijuana cartel, are as follows one shortly after the murder of Francisco Rafael. The police interrogated his family and several of the party invitees, who may have shared information that led to Aguara Galindo's arrest, given that the drug lord was alleged the motives behind the murder case are officially unknown, but Mexican authorities believe that given the circumstances and the players involved, the suspected source of fire was organized crime, and that the motives possibly stemmed from unpaid old debts and old retributions. The authorities are working with two separate lines of investigation. One, the first line alleges that Francisco Rafael was killed by members of the Beltran Leva cartel, a drug trafficking organization that fights for the control of the smuggling routes in the Baja California Peninsula against the Sinaloa cartel, to the second line alleges that Francisco Rafael was El Chapo was nearly captured by the Mexican Federal Police in Los Cabos in March 2012 after an anonymous call informed the DA that the drug lord was possibility hiding in three properties. Investigators allege that Francisco Rafael although he was no longer involved in organized crime, might have tipped the authorities to his whereabouts and incurred El Chapo's wrath. They also believe that the attack might have been carried out by a local drug dealing group in Los Cabos. The main suspect of this allegation is a man named Javier Lopez Rivera or Javier. In this line of investigation, the authorities believe that the drug dealer sent two of his men to pick up the assassin who had arrived from Sinaloa at the Los Cabos International Airport. Two of the three men involved in the murder case, they allege, go by the aliases Kane and El Chapito. According to the Mexican authorities, the murder plot was possibly carried out with the collaboration of the Tijuana cartel, because no security measures were taken during the party and because the entrances were open to the public when they are usually closed for private E. But it e. The investigation was further complicated by the fact that many of the invitees fearing for their lives fled from the scene when Francisco Rafael was killed by the clown. Out of the 80 to 100 attendees, only 20 of them stayed, many of them family members and employees of the banquet hall. When the authorities interrogated those who stayed and asked them, whether they had recognized the assassin or any other physical features, none of them were able to give any details. Some stated that they did not even pay attention to the clown when he entered the crime scene, while others stated that they did not even recall exactly what the clown was wearing, remembering only that the assassin was wearing a blue striped or purple shirt, a multicolored wig, and a red clown nose. On 7 November 2013, a person who was at the murder scene uploaded a one, 
four-minute video on YouTube showing the scene before Francisco Rafael was killed. The video starts with the former vocalist of Banda El Ricotto singing El Senor de las Canas, a song by Vicente Fernandez, alongside a mariachi group. As the film progresses, the camera turns to the sides and shows former footballer Jared Borghetti sitting. Towards the last seconds of the video, a bald-looking man passes through the back of the tables in front of the camera and apparently gives a hand signal to the assassin before walking away. Then, a man dressed as a clown, the presumed assassin, passes through the crowd and heads towards Francisco Rafael. Seconds later, one shot was heard. Most of the invitees were not aware of what had happened, and the music continued. Shortly afterwards, four more shots were heard from the rear. Following the second round of shots, the music stopped and the invitees started screaming. The video only captured a few seconds after the last four shots before concluding. The Baja California Sur authorities believe that the bald-looking man that appeared on the video shortly before the clown and apparently gave him a hand signal is involved in the murder plot. Eyewitnesses who sat at a table with the suspect stated that they did not know who he was but that they saw him greet Francisco Rafael during the party. The suspect reportedly made three phone calls during the party and sent several text messages. Investigators believe that the man was possibly communicating with the assassin. The authorities are investigating the text messages and phone calls made that day in the area through the Telsel database. With the surface of the video, the authorities were able to also gather more information about the assassin and the murder. They were able to identify other invitees, including former Cruz Azul footballer Hector Lopez. The video allowed the authorities to identify the physical characteristics of the assassin, including his skin color, approximate height, and the color of his clothing. The authorities are investigating whether any purchases made in custom or fabric stores in the area might lead them to the murderers. In January 2014, the PDR stated that the alleged mastermind of the murder was possibly Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa alias El Chino Antrax the leader of Los Antrax, an armed squadron of the Sinaloa cartel. The agency revealed through several photographs that Francisco Rafael and Arachiga Gamboa met at the fight promotion event of boxers Omar Chavez and Jochim Alcine in Los Cabos two days prior to the murder. The PGR hypothesized that the murder was possibly stemmed from Francisco Rafael's involvement in money laundering activities and as a message from the Los Antrax to show that they were in charge of organized crime in Las Ca. They also believe that Ismail El Mayo Zambado, a top leader of the Sinaloa cartel, might have ordered the attack. The state authorities identified two other possible murderers, No Castro alias Roan Arachigagambo is right hand, man in Los Cabos, and a man known by his alias Arthur Teen. They also conducted anthropometry studies to conclude if Arachiga Gamboa fit the physical descriptions of the man featured in the video. In popular culture, in Narcos, Mexico, Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix is played by Mexican actor Francisco Barrero.